got Chanel here as well. Hi. Chanel Edwards. And I've also got uh, our resident comedian, Shane Yates, with us. How are you, Shane? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, a little bit about Hallam. Um, local lad from Withenshaw. Uh, he went to school where, H? Uh, Kingsway. Kingsway High School. And I think your first club, if you want to just tell us a little bit about it, was it Broad East Central? Yeah, my first club was Broad East Central. Um, I played there till I was about nine. I was in and out of like Man United and City um, practice teams. I was with Shane for a bit as well um, when I was younger. And then from there, I got scouted by City and played with City for a year and then got yeah. released and then went to back to my grassroots team and then got picked up again and then went to Everton. So just to talk about your first release, so you were what, nine, ten years old when you got released? Yeah, I, was, I think how, I was ten. Yeah. How, how did that feel? Um, obviously a bit of a, a bit of a loss of confidence and not a nice feeling, obviously, when you're that young. But I think leaving was at that time was good for me because I went back to my grassroots team, Broadheath, yeah. and started enjoying football again, um, which is the main thing, I think, at that age to enjoy it. Um, right. And then from there, I was, I was doing well and got scouted by Everton. So do you think, you know, obviously we've got parents and kids listening in, in this evening. So the first thing is don't give up, even if it doesn't work out the first time. Uh, enjoy your football. But yeah. the role, the, you had enough confidence in your ability to sort of say, well, I'm going to have another crack at it, even at yeah. 10. Yeah, 100%. I think, when you're that when you're that young, when it's like 10, 11, 12, like around them ages, the main thing is just to be enjoying it. Yeah. Um, and then if it's meant to, if it's going to happen, it'll happen, type of thing. Right. And when you went back, I know you, you were scouted again a year later by City, even though they'd released you. And then you had yeah. a choice of going to City or or Everton. Why did you choose Everton over City? Yeah. So when City released me, I went to my grassroots team, had a year there. And then yeah. City scouted me again at the same time that Everton did. And both teams wanted me to sign. But I just felt like Everton was more, had more of a family feeling. Um, I felt more comfortable. I was enjoying it more there. Because I did like a six-week trial with them both again. Um, and yeah, Everton just felt more homely, more just somewhere where I was enjoying it and felt comfortable. Even though it was an hour drive. Um, my mum and my granddad, my family, they all wanted me to actually sign for Everton instead of City. But they left it up to me and Everton was was my choice anyway. So Was it? Even at that age, it was your decision? Yeah, yeah, just because of how much I, I was enjoying it there. And um, that, that's the main thing, I think, at that age. Great. And um, looking back, do you think, did City ever say to you, well, we made a mistake? Did they actually come up and say that or not? Yeah, they did. They did um, around that time when they wanted me to sign again. They were saying all that type of stuff. How oh, we made a mistake. Da, 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 da. But um, so was it a different coach or was it some a different scout? I mean, what you know, who was it that scouted you again? I can't remember off the top of my head, but I remember Paul Powell was the yeah Paul Powell yeah that's right. He, he, he released me. Um, he was the one who released me. Um, but I can't remember who 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 was taught me who I need to go back. I can't remember off the top of my head. So would it be right in saying maybe Paul Power didn't think you were up to it, but then another coach can come up and say, mm, "Actually, I see something different." You know, so it's just yeah. just opinions, isn't it? Is that right? Hundred percent. Yeah, that goes all the way up through to men's football. Um, really? Always opinions. One one manager can like you, and a different manager might not might not have your type of thing. Yeah, and that just depends on. I guess their opinion, doesn't it? You touched on your granddad and your your, your, your mum taking you. Uh, obviously, uh, I think you, you mentioned your granddad. Was he working at the time? Just tell me a bit about that and the support that you had from him. Yeah, so basically my granddad's been there for me since since the very beginning, since I started playing football when I was like six, seven. He always used to take me to every game and he'd like, when I played for the, some, the grassroots teams on like, Weekends when it was like when I was like eight or nine, I'd score like maybe seven goals every game, and he used to write them down on his hand. A bit like, a bit like me. 
Yeah, a bit like you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Yeah. But he'd write, he'd write them down in his hand and be like, I give you a quid for every goal you score. So I right. always remember, yeah, he'd, he'd count them all up and he'd, he'd just been there forever, really. Been there forever. He used to take me to... Used to take me to Everton um, training, every, like every day, really. Um, and what did yeah, he but, work in, or what was his work for? Did he? Yeah, he had a little co corner shop off license thing, but he used to shut it to take me and bring me back. Um, obviously, really grateful for that. At the time, you don't realise how much of a big kind of sacrifice it is. But as I've got older, and you look back and you think, like, wow, that was that was a, a big thing for them to do that. Yeah, uh, big sacrifice that from your granddad, eh? Yeah. Um, did he know much about football or was he one sort of quiet one, didn't really say much in the car, just pick you up, drop you off? I mean, how, 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 how did it work? Yeah, he always used to say to me he was never interested in football until I started playing it. But then when I started playing it, he, he got into it and he'd always, like, he'd always listen to the radio, like there, on the way there and on the way back and about all talk sport and how people talked about football and he learned from there really and watching me play. Because he was so born in Barbados, is that right? Say that again? Was he born in Barbados, your granddad? No, no, this is the one from the UK. Oh, from the UK. So he wasn't really yeah. interested in football, but because of your involvement, he, he became interested. Yeah, yeah. So was it, is it helpful, the fact that he probably didn't know a lot about football? Did that help you? Because you didn't have somebody constantly saying, you know, you could have done this better, you could have done that better, you could have done this better. Do you think that that would have been suited um, you or the fact that he was quiet and didn't know much about football? Do you think that helped you? Possibly, possibly. Um, I guess you can get some parents who can be too pushy and think, think they know better than the coaches or whatever, but that was never the case with my granddad. He always just told me to listen to the coaches and just do my best. Yeah. That, that type of stuff. Um and left it up to me. So that, you took, took yourself to Everton, you made the right decision, you thought, mm, I'm really enjoying this. That's obviously uh, early doors, sort of 11 years old. Um, tell us about the sort of years coming to shine in your scholarship. I mean, it was five, six years on. How did you go through the ranks? Were you the best player? Were you your worst player? How did it work out with, with the academy? Yeah, the memories looking back at the academy, always the trips abroad always like kind of stick out to me where we'd go like Belgium or Austria and we'd have like a tournament against kind of top teams out there um they're like my biggest memories I'd say that kind of stick out to me and what did you always, learn from them do you think what did you learn from being abroad you learn loads don't you just even just the traveling just like you know just stuff stuff like everyone looks after their own passport and it's your responsibility and you've got to all act like in a certain way or you've got, got all got like your kit on you can't lose it you've got this that it taught me quite a lot about not just football but kind of growing up I guess um, being independent at a young being, age yeah being independent having like your own hotel room type of thing being down for dinner at this time and yeah it was good but yeah. and coming coming up I always would say I was like one of the top top players at Everton um coming through those those age groups. So I remember I was talking before, I think you were you were physically quite well developed, weren't you? you, you so you yeah. were always one of the quickest, one of the strongest, which helped you at early doors. But another example, that doesn't always work out. For I think we were saying that John Lundstrom, who was at Sheffield United now, yeah. uh, he was one of the smaller lads. And, you know, um, tell me a bit about how you differed to him, but obviously he's gone on and he's at Sheffield United now in the Premier League. And, but he wasn't so, so good at a younger age. Yeah, I mean, you get, obviously, people develop at different times. I developed physically. Um, I would say I was quite, quite a way ahead of most, most of the other lads. Um, through, the academy, through the academy ages, you're Ash Shane, he'll probably remember. I was yeah. quite, quite a big lad. Um, no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... It's amazing. I mean, you know a little bit about that, Shane. Shane, tell us about some of the academies and any questions for, um, for, for, for Hallam on, on sort of going abroad and the academy sort of 11 to 15, which is your specialist sort of area. Have you yeah. got any questions for Hallam uh, uh, regarding that? 
Um, not really, but just to second what he was saying, you know, obviously going abroad and having the experience when he's at Everton, the same when we used to take the boys abroad uh, with United, it's um, it's a big eye opener for them, you know, because they're away from home, away from the parents, away from all the away from the friends and school and all the rest of it. And it's just to concentrate on football and um, you know you get a lot out of it. And obviously, also when they do go abroad. You find out a lot more about the kids because you're with them 24-7, um, yeah. looking after them, chatting to them, making sure they're not homesick and all the rest of it. But also, you, you, you get to know them on a one-to-one basis more than you would if you get to see them at training, say, twice a week or three times a week. Yeah. You, know, you get to know the personality of the kids and how they react and whether they're shy or you know whether they can handle being abroad and on the big... you know Because obviously, these tournaments that they go to... Um, I'm sure Everton won a few, maybe. Um, but the ones that we went to, with with the boys, you, you, you kind of find who's up for it type thing. You know, who are you big players? I remember going on a couple myself, and um, it, uh, it, it turned out that some of the lads wanted to go home after a day, some of the young ones. And I also remember quite a few of them weren't eating properly. So after the first or second game, they were sort of burnt out. Uh, did that yeah, happen? I mean, yeah, that, 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 they're the type of things I was I was meaning to say before. Like you say, like some 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 of the lads didn't really eat the food that they had there, or couldn't sleep, or missed yeah. the missed the home home comforts. But as a as a professional footballer now, there is a lot of travelling. There is a lot of being away from home. There is a lot of eating at different hotels and other things like that, which. Yeah. When you're young, like, it kind of breaks you into it and you can see the players who it's for and who it's maybe not for. We were talking to Chanel uh, um, earlier about your granddad and, um, and his support and obviously uh, I think your, your mum used to come along. Chanel, you've had that experience of De Mayo and obviously I think uh, going to Liverpool rather than United, but anything that you want to add to, to his sort of support that he's had uh, up in, in, in the early years, up to 15? Yeah, um, Hallam, it was interesting to hear that your decision to go to Everton was based on you just enjoyed it there more. That was ultimately why we chose the club that we did for our son as well. Um, But looking back to when you were younger, do you feel that it would have been better that you'd had somebody who was taking you who would have known more about the game as opposed to somebody who wasn't that aware on the football? Or do you think it was better just having somebody who didn't put that extra pressure on you on top of probably what you were already experiencing being in that environment anyway? Um, Possibly. I mean, I guess that depends on the type of person you are, the type of play you are I guess um, for me I think it was good that it, it was kind of separated rather than just him being into football and everything being football 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 like whereas when I'd get in the car with my granddad after training like he, we'd talk about other stuff he'd talk about stories of when he was in the army and then I could kind of like be 100% football when I was at training and then I'd get out of the car then it would be like a break from it do you understand what I mean? yeah yeah. So that so uh, so that is quite that is really important because you can separate the two. So it's almost you go into that environment, you're the footballer, you can come away, you're back to being Hallam again, not any pressures of what you've just done or what you've how you performed. Did you worry about being re- released again when you got picked up again by Everton and City? Um, Initially, I think when I was first signing, I can't remember now, it's hard, hard to think back, but I think when I was first signing back with Everton instead of City, there might have been that little worry there. But then after, I don't know, a few months of being there, I was kind of certain that I wasn't going to get released because of how, how well I was doing. And another thing is my family never put any, 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 any pressure on me at all. Like There was none of that which definitely would, would help, I think. Yeah, uh, good question, Chanel. I mean, um, I think we, we discussed earlier, just off air, about maybe later on about having more discussions about football when you get to 16. I'll, I'll cover that in a minute, Alan. 
But obviously, yeah. you played for England under 16, score goals, under 17, score goals, under 18s, under 19s. What was it like playing for, for England at youth level? It was great, yeah. It was great. That was um, definitely something that I'll always look back on and think of good times. I met loads of good people. Um, just being able to represent England when you're that age is, is a really good feeling because obviously everyone everyone knows your type of thing. Everyone in school at the time, because I was in school at the time, everyone knows you're like England's, you're playing for England, you're playing like as a striker. It's a really nice feeling. So that, that'll probably open doors with, no doubt open doors with girls, open doors with friendships, but how did it affect your education having all this football? Um, to be honest, I was just 100% football, I'll just be honest. <laughs> like, right, it wasn't, okay. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. So you weren't really as bothered about your, your education as, no. as, right. Do you think you should no, have been more bothered about your education? Yeah, ideally, yeah, ideally. Right. But at the time, it was just, there was nothing else for me. It was, oh, it wasn't even a question to me in, in my head. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, so... Talking about later on, at 16, you, you got offered a scholarship at Everton. I think you and Ross Barkley at the time, is that right? Together? Yeah. Just yeah, talk yeah. about your relationship with Ross and how it worked together, that you, you played together, you, you went on international duty together, et cetera, et cetera. How, how yeah, did that so, work? So when we were both, obviously, coming through the academy at Everton, we both got offered our scholarships together and then we both got our, offered our first pro together. Um, so obviously he's he's done really well for himself. He's gone to the top of the top. Um, fair play to him. But we always came through together. So when we were like under 14s, we'd both go up and play the under 16s games. Yeah. And then under 16s, we'd both go up and play the under 18s games. So that was an indication. If you're, you're playing a year or two years up, you knew then that you were doing quite well. Yeah, yeah. And... I think at that point you said, right, you got your scholarship and then you were offered a pro. And I think you had another agent at the time, didn't you? The Jack Rodwell's agent. We won't say who it was. But yeah. what, just tell me about having a couple of different agents. How, how, how are things different now to how you were sort of when you had your first agents? How does it, how does it differ? Yeah, so at that age, um, this is where I think maybe it would have been better if my mum and my granddad did know a little bit about football because right. I'm 16, 17, doing really well, getting offered pro contracts, um, playing for England and lot of, had like hundreds of agents ringing, ringing my phone, um, getting in contact with my mum and we just didn't have a clue really. We didn't, we didn't know what we were doing. Um, my mum rang me, Helen. And she asked me to be your agent. So no. <laughs> she actually told me that. She actually told she, me. Mate, honestly, she rang me up. She rang me up. She went, Shane, uh, Hallam's getting offered a pro contract. And obviously, I was working at United at the time. And I was like, right, is he? And then she said, do you fancy being Hallam's agent? I was like, definitely not. 100% not. Not my game. Not my game one bit. And then look, bloody 10 years on. All right, mate. Hello. <laughs> well done, it? Oh, God. So... Obviously, maybe at a younger age, just having someone there to support you was great. But later on, when you do talk about contracts and you do yeah. need to kick on a little bit and maybe you had decided to leave Everton at that point, but it would have helped you. But would it have helped you push you a little bit more, maybe? Yeah, I, I think it would have. Um, I do think it would have would have helped me push me, push me more. Um, what way? Just... Because it got serious, like it, it yeah. became something serious and up till then it was always just have fun. My family was always just make sure you're enjoying it type of thing and they didn't really know how to, and I didn't really know how to, to kind of transition it to like, this is your job, you need to earn contracts now, like right. you need to be progressing, you need to do this. Maybe an agent who I could trust and rely on could have helped me do that a bit better. Okay. And um, I think you changed agent at one point, didn't you? Was it after coming back from a, a tournament or something? What, what happened there? Um, yeah, I ended up having some issues with that agent we spoke about. And yeah. um, ended up having problems with a tax bill that they left me with that wasn't explained properly to me, myself, my parents. Um, 
but that's all been resolved now. Um, so then I, I left his agency and joined someone else. And it was only when this second agent spoke to me and said, like, listen, you're going to be out of contract in, I think it was how long I've left. I think I had, I think I had six months left on my deal at Everton. He's like, you're going to be out of contract. You need to earn a new deal. That was when I started thinking, like, right, it's really serious now. I need to, I need to earn a contract. I need to earn my living type of thing. Okay. Great, it's good insight that because you know it happens a lot. I mean, um, obviously, I think we've got a relatively good reputation and we have a fantastic rapport with you and other players. But it, it, there are some horror stories. I mean, you hear it all the time, don't you? So you know, picking the right agent and there are some really good ones out there is quite important. But certainly, sort of sixteen, seventeen was that fair to say? Sixteen, seventeen, a good age to. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a crucial age really to have have built a relationship with an agent and be going into signing contracts and just like that type of thing with an agent who you trust. If you don't mind, I mean, me and you, you negotiated a, a couple of deals and obviously you transfer, your latest transfer, but it's quite exciting, but it's quite nerve wracking as well. As you, yeah, probably, uh, you wouldn't mind sharing um, transfer deadline day on another occasion with us, would you? Would that be all right? And, and how yeah. transfers work because the ins and outs of a transfer is it is pretty mind blowing, isn't it? <laughs> it is, isn't it? If you think about it, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, okay, that'd be great. Thanks for that. Um, so you got to sixteen, you got your pro, uh, you started playing, and then all of a sudden, were there any chances in the first team for you, or did they sort of say to you, "Well, look, go out on loan"? Yeah, when sixteen, seventeen, um, like I say, got my pro, um, wasn't really seen any first team action by the time I got to 19. Um, that was exactly. around, the time, yeah, around that time I was talking about then. And then I got a new deal, a new pro at Everton. Um, but still no real real time with the first team. I mean, a why, few... Why was that, you think? Say that again? Why was that? Was there just too many players ahead of you? Quality yeah. Players? Yeah, there was, there was a lot of... Um, a lot of foreign strikers from like Greece, um, Spain, I think they had like three or four um, who who were a bit older than me and had been brought in from abroad so I was behind them and then behind a few more other lads who were playing regularly in the first team so there wasn't really many chances for me. I see that a lot Shane actually. Yeah, quite a few yeah I, was just about, I was just about to come in to be fair Baz. Yeah, um, obviously cool. like Hallam said you know if you're at a pro club especially Everton, Liverpool, City, United, you're always playing up against other lads. And, it, you know, it, it gets to a stage where, like Hallam's just said, one's come from Greece, one's come from Spain. All of a sudden, you know, you're not, you, you're not, you, you've got to be best. You've got to be the best of the best. But again, Hallam's a young lad wanting to break into the first team. as where Ross Barkley was the centre midfielder. Bit of an all-rounder, one not hell? So, you know, yeah. he got more of a chance because of, the, the 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 people in midfield at Everton at that stage maybe wasn't as strong as the strikers they had because he had Lukaku. Did he have Lukaku at the time, Alan? He Yeah, he signed, I think, six months after um, what I was just talking about. So he signed when I was 20, when just before I was 20. He signed, he's a yeah, year. So, so, you're, so you're, in the res, you're in the reses or in the yeah. 20, 21s or whatever. You're in the yeah. res trying to break through, but all of a sudden you're playing against a, a beast of a, of a person. Yeah. And, you know, you've got to get past him, but then also you've got to get past these lads that they've bought, you know, because the other thing as well, what, what people don't realise, is they end up buying these players from Spain or from Greece or wherever. They, they're buying them, so they've got to get the money's worth. That's where you're a homegrown player, so you're like, right, well, you can go out on loan and mm -hmm. go and try and play first-team football because you're not going to get in here. But... You know, as where Ross's time and the reason why he is where he is is because it's sort of like the look of the draw. Because you two going up through the ranks, I remember you coming to Carrington and playing playing against um, playing against our youth team, twenty ones type thing. I remember that as clear yeah. as day. Um, and Ross Barkley and yourself played, and you were two two exciting players. And the, the same, it was Pogba and Ravel and whoever else was playing for us at the time. And it was yeah. a really good game to watch, but. Um, yeah, there was just a difference. I, personally, we, we we touched on it the other day, didn't we, Baz, about being yeah. in the right place at the right yeah, time and having that I, look. 
you think know, some of it's luck. I think you're right. Lukaku was ahead of him, and he's he's got other players ahead of him. Um, I think. I mean, looking at uh, he's then gone to Northampton, Bury, Sheffield Wednesday, back to Bury, and I remember thinking to myself, oh, six, seven loan clubs, but that's probably a good thing, wasn't it, Alan? Because you don't always learn off your first loan, do you? Is that no, right? No. Yeah, I agree, definitely. Maybe it might have been better for me to go out on loan a little bit younger, maybe, because yeah, right. By okay. the, I think I was 20 or 19. No, 19, yeah. my first loan, I think. And that was Northampton, and that's kind of a big eye-opener. Um, I was only there for a month, but I uh, played, I think it was like four games or something, because a few of them got called off because of the weather around Christmas. Um, but I scored on my debut, but the, it was just a big eye opener. Like Janelle, do you remember asking me what um, you were going to ask him about his loans? Is there anything you wanted to ask her on on loans? Um, not sure on loans, but just going back to that bit where um, you were nineteen, pro at Everton, waiting for your opportunity to get up and be in the first team or get a chance there. Was that not really quite frustrating? And how did you, you manage that? If you've given so many years of your time and your life to a club and then you're still not getting your, your chance and seeing other players, how, how did you deal with that? Yeah, it, it was frustrating. Um, but I'm quite a laid-back person. And I did think, like, eventually it'll just happen. Um, yeah. Until I was coming to the end of my contract and then I started to think, like, I need to get a new contract, I need to do something type of thing. Um, I need to go out on loan and play some games maybe because the strikers who were in front of me, um, they were older and they've been brought in, like like I said to Baz before, they've been brought in from abroad and I was quite a way back in the kind of, in the line of getting a chance. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it, it was frustrating, but I was still trying to enjoy my training and play the reserve games and just do as well as I could. Great. Quick question. Uh, big shout out to Richard Trax. How are you, Rich? Uh, he just wants to ask you, Alan, through your career, um, how did your relationship with your friends differ? Were they supportive or was it like hard not to join in and going out, etc., cetera, et cetera? Um, no, to be, to be fair, that's one thing I've been quite lucky with. I've got a really good group of friends behind me. Um, they were all into fitness and I think one of them, you know, one of them, Baz, one of them's a fighter. Um, <laughs> Solomon, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're a legend, isn't he? I'm sure yeah. he'll be listening tonight. Hi, right, Sol, how Probably, are you doing? Probably will. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got a, got a really good group of friends. Shane knows them as well. Um, yeah. They're not, they're not idiots or nothing. We've all got, we've all got kind of... So there wasn't anybody <laughs> leading you astray, really. That's the point. No, they've all, they've all got their heads screwed on. They're all good, good bunch yeah. of lads. Uh, it's just Hallam who's the wrong one, really. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but how many times do you hear, oh, he's a brilliant player, but oh, he's surrounded by, you know, you know people that aren't yeah. really on a social yeah. or do lead you astray or don't give you advice and say, no, you've got training tomorrow, go to bed early or don't drink or whatever. That's really important, isn't it, Chanel? Oh, yeah, definitely. Did you not find um, <laughs> it would be girls trying to lead you astray, I think, there, more than anything? <laughs> Just going back to, like, loans, um, how, do you, how do you decide where to go on loan when you started feeling that bit of pressure to, you've got to do something now because you knew your contract was coming to an end? How did you make the decision on where to go to? To be honest, it was just the reserve manager, Alan Stubbs, who came up to me and said... Northampton want, want you to go alone. We nice. want you to go. We, we, we kind of want you to go. So I didn't have much saying. I, I could have said no. Um, I could have kind of waited for a different opportunity. But at that time, I was just, I was kind of just like, I want to go and do something different. I want to play. I want to, I don't just want to be sitting around when I'm not likely to be used for the first team. So mm. it's time I play some men's football. Well, you had a good relationship with Stubbsy, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah, yeah. He's done well, hasn't he? I what think that's think the reason difference? why he pushed for that as well, didn't he? He pushed oh, for you yeah. to go because he wanted you to play men's football, I think. Yeah, I guess you could you could probably see um, the situation that I was in. And it wasn't just me. There was, there was a few players um, 
Tyus Browning was there, but he ended up getting his chance in the first team. Um, there's a few few of them who went on loan. Russ Russ actually went on loan as well, but he went um, a few a year or two before me. Um, so yeah, he, I guess it's kind of the manager's job to see, or the reserve manager, sorry, it's job to see what situation um, each player is in and what's what's best for them. I think there's a big uh, issue with that at the moment. I mean, I see it a lot where the players trying to go out on loan, they go to the wrong club, they're not prepared, and being prepared is really important because I think you need to make an impact, don't you, H? And I think you scored on most of your either debuts or you, you were playing. I mean, how many times is it that you, you hear players go out on loan and you don't play, you know? Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. That's um, one of the big problems that kind of the lower league teams have now where they get a player in on loan who's on good money from like a Premier League team and then they struggle to adapt and they struggle to kind of make an impact in, in the lower leagues. Why do you think some of the managers and coaches want loan players from higher leagues to come down? Um, I guess just to add to the squad, um, add quality to the squad and maybe yeah. to shake it up a bit. With, like yeah, shake it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so people don't get relaxed and, and, and settled in their positions. Like, you know, there's competition. Yeah, definitely, 100%. I, I, know, I know that from both sides because I've been the player who's gone in from a Premier League team and kind of shook things up, like done yeah. well, scored on my debut type of thing. And now I've been the player who's at like a League One, League Two club and has seen like a a younger loanee coming from a Premier League club and it's kind of sparked the, the lads that are there to up the game type of thing. Yeah. Have you had any injuries throughout sort of this period? Have you, how did you cope with injuries during that, you know, at all? Yeah, yeah. I had um, quite a few hamstring injuries, um, recurring ones, both sides. Um, had an injection in the tendon of my hamstring when I was, I think about, 19 I think that was um that that was hard to be honest it's hard to kind of have an injury like that when you've never had one before um it just what's the right word it it's frustrating I suppose yeah it's frustrating yeah it's frustrating um, we touched on it last in our last session about injuries and, and not coming back too early and making sure you get the right development and do your exercises but um I remember you going from Berry and Obviously, we've been together a couple of years now, but um, as you're aware, we screen our players and, and you've done the, your screening with Shane uh, Murphy. Yeah. Tell everybody about your exercises and then about after about a month, what everyone was doing at Carlisle. Yeah, um, so since meeting Shane, I've not had no, um, no more tears in any of, the, any of my hamstrings that I've had in the past. Um, it's just... Different, different stuff that no one, none of the physios, even at Everton, when had hamstring problems there, they they didn't do the type of work that Shane does. They're kind of more focused on strength, strength work, strengthening the muscle, whereas Shane's more focused on movement, which is obviously a massive part of football movement because you're always moving. Especially as a striker, um, explosive speed and that. Yeah, you know. yeah. exactly. Different directions. It's not just like strength for the hamstring and then it should be okay. It's let's test the hamstring in this way, let's put it in this movement and see how it reacts. Like diff Different things um, that I'd never came across before and they work for me. Could you get that in any, any other agency? Because obviously I was being the best and all. Um, did, you get any, did you get anybody else that was um, willing to, you know, maybe get some medical advice with your hamstring injuries and stuff? Nah, nothing. No. Nothing else, no. I think getting the support, as you say, off the field with the family has been really important. Getting support, whether it be for contracts. I mean, as you probably see, we're, we're all a bit of a family and we keep it quite close and we all get to, to know each other really, really well, which is what you want. Um, I know you, you know me and, and, and Shane and now Chanel, all part of the team. And I think it's probably a good idea to have a bit of a, a group of people around you. Is that right? Yeah, 100%, I agree. Football can be, I guess, I guess a cutthroat kind of business. Um, yeah. From a young age, like obviously when I was at City, 
getting released yeah. for a ten goal, it's not nice. But the more people like yourself and Shane you can have around you to kind of support you and and help you, the better, I think. Yeah, and tell us about how you've differed from going. You obviously went to Bury originally, and now and obviously Carlisle. And then what about off the field? What have you sort of done off the field as regards, do you do any extra stuff out of training? Uh, do you do your own stuff that you have to do in addition to, to what you've done with Twindon now? Do you mean just, just in general? Yeah, physically. Do you do anything else that the club don't ask you to do, but you do of your own, off your own bat? Um, just the work that Shane talked about, really. Right. Um, so all stretches and movements, things to help yeah. you. I just, I just see most of that stuff. And I think as I've got older, I've kind of known what, what my body needs, um, what my body needs for like to be ready for a Saturday or what my body needs to be good for training. Or if my body needs a rest, like you kind of get to know your body as you get older. What's your diet like with regards to training and stuff? How, you know, like during the week when you're training more so than a game, do you change your diet? Do you have more carbs, more protein? Because obviously you've got to repair yourself and whatnot uh, for yeah. training. Do you find yourself eating more training or do you find yourself eating more before a game? Like, How does it work? Um, everyone's different. I know some players who don't like eating at all before a game. I know players who like eating big, massive bowls of pasta before games. So that's just individual. For me, um, when I'm training, I tend to eat probably more than when I have, like the day before a game, I don't like to be feeling too over full and heavy, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah it does make Just sense. A quick yeah, uh, shout out from uh, Hallam Walker over in New Zealand, says hello Hallam. And I've got a question from Anthony Barco. Hallam, would you consider coaching at a grassroots team or through qualifications, or would you jump straight into academy football? Or do you plan anything as regards coaching when you, when you retire? To be honest, I've got no plans at the moment to coach after um, after I retire. But I wouldn't mind doing grassroots. I think that's a good way to like a less pressured environment um, for the kids and they would, and for the lads, and they'd probably enjoy it more. Um, but now I've not not had any plans or anything to coach. Got to get you in the Premiership first, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Uh, just a quick one. Someone else has asked me whether what's your routine like now that uh, in lockdown, what you're doing on a daily basis, you know, training wise to keep yourself fit. Um, we've got a, a program with the club Swindon. Um, they give us a that we have an app where we have to record all the running sessions, fitness sessions that we do. So what would it be on a daily basis like? What would you do? Like, what have you done today, or what have you done yesterday? Oh, um, run like a usual warm up, and then it'd be a cardio session. So I don't know. It usually lasts around forty minutes, just depending on what day. Um, and and outside or inside? Outside. Outside. outside yeah. Um, Interval running or or one straight run? Yeah. You. It depends. Depends on day to day what they've got set for the program. Like today, it was interval running and then some speed work at the end. Right. Whereas I know on Saturday we've got to do that 5k challenge again. So that'll just be a straight 5k and then that'll be that. What's your time on 5k? Do you want to know? <laughs> yeah, of course I do, mate. Of course I do. I'm going out. I'm going out tomorrow. <laughs> Go on. What is it? 17. 17. Oh, See if you can beat that. No. Nah. Say that now. <laughs> I'm probably around about 18. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've obviously just had a reasonably good move from the bottom of the league, Carlisle, to the top of the league at Swindon. What, uh, what are your plans and what are your targets for the future? I know we've talked about it and we've got some plans, but how do you feel the future's looking? You're 26 years old, got... Yeah. Coming into the time of your life, really now, what what what's your targets for the next couple of years? Yeah, well, hopefully, after this um, pandemic thing, we can go back and win the league, get promoted, so then we'll be in League One. Yeah. Um, and then I want to try and get in the championship as soon as possible, and then go from there, really. Right. And do you think 
that is a reasonable target for you in the next sort of 12 to 18 months? Do you think you could do that? What would you think you need to improve or do you think it's just a, a little bit of luck? Yeah, no, I think I can definitely do that. I'm definitely capable of doing that. Um, I think everyone needs a little bit of luck in football, but yeah. at the end of the day, it's down to me and the work that I put in and performing on the pitch. If I perform on the pitch, I'll, I'll get that, um, I'll, I'll achieve that goal. Mm. Someone did touch on um, asking about uh, your move from Carlisle to, to Swindon. How did it come about? And I'm like, and how long did it take? So, but actually quite a lot longer than what you, you thought, wasn't it? So do you want to yeah. just run through how that happened, Carlisle to, to Swindon? Yeah, so um, last season I was at Carlisle, um, scored 15 goals. But I, they had an option in my contract where I stay for another year. Um, so they activated that option. But there was a lot of clubs interested in me interested in me after that season so it was going to be Swindon and it was going to be another team and they were going to it was it was just mad wasn't it Baz like yeah it was a bit frustrating be, for you wasn't it because yeah, everyone yeah. thinks transfers happens dead easy but I think right. I think was it took about 12 months to, to, to come about in the end in the end yeah from from when it started like like it was meant to be happening and it wasn't happening and then it came to January and we ended up getting it over the line, which I was buzzing about. Yeah, and how have you found the difference between Swindon and Carlisle? Um, I'd say it's a much kind of better, well-run club. Um, and the standard of training is a lot better. Um, I, I'm definitely enjoying it a lot more. Get on with everyone there. Um, it's good. You can when see in the results, can't you? You're at the top of the table, aren't they? So, yeah. you know, you can see the difference between be playing it where you were playing. I'm not too sure where Carlisle now. Are they 15th or something like that? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, but obviously top of the table. It, it's in a, different. In I mean, place. each club goes through it. Carlisle's had their good period. And it's yeah, yeah. Sure. About the players around you as well. You know, if you've got the right players around you, that helps. Um, you know, Swindon yeah. were in the Championship not so long ago. You know, so... Um, but I yeah. think you've scored a few big FA Cup goals. So when you've made the step up, uh, H, I don't think there's any reason why you've always scored against Blackburn, against bigger teams. So Cardiff, I think yeah. this year, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I, I know myself, I can play that level. It's just getting there, um, having the opportunity and performing when I need to perform. So just a quick plug for our, um, our company. But obviously with Propel, you've spoke to us, you've had up two or three different agents but an honest opinion of what obviously we're small uh, how would you compare what we do compared to how other people do it if you don't mind and you know, on the differences yeah no i'd say it's a lot more personal with um and your day-to-day -day stuff and things like that more honesty um just everything you'd want in an agent for me um like the stuff with shane no one else has the fitness work no one else has ever suggested anything else like that or one, one of them might have said oh I'll let you see this hamstring specialist but never went through with it um, like when you say something you keep your word and I think that's all you that's can really ask for really isn't it I know um, you've done well off the field as well you're getting a steady income from uh, supporting yourself with through buy to let and houses but do you think that's an area as well where you've, it's been helped with administration and just so that you can just concentrate on your football. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I say, you've helped. You've helped, people won't know, but you've helped me quite a bit with um, my buy to lets and things like that. Things like accountancy and just things that maybe would help being off my plate, and I can just focus on the football. Whereas I might be worrying about, oh, I need to sort this, I need to sort this, and then it might have an effect on my football where. Because you've been helping me with that, it's made it a lot easier. Well, there's a lot on your plate, isn't there, as a footballer? And the less you've got on your plate that you can just concentrate on your football, I suppose it, it's better, isn't it? I mean, you hear yeah. a lot of stories of players now leaving the game and then all of a sudden they've got no uh, no money, they've got a big tax bill coming in, they haven't got any extra income, they haven't thought about how they leave. And, you know, I'd yeah. like to think in a few years' time we'll be planning for those sort of things, but let's get you in the... Uh, 
the Premiership first, or the Championship first anyway. Um, yeah. It's been brilliant tonight, mate. I, I would like, if we can, in a, you know, as a, another session, touch on transfers and the, the actual transfer deadline and yeah. us, us driving down and... or is Because it, it, is, it is quite stressful, isn't it? You don't realise. Yeah, talking don't about contracts. Quick, yeah, talking about contracts, talking about money. That's quite important, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. definitely. Janelle, do you want to end up with any uh, a question for, for Hallam? Um, yeah, sorry. Can I just, um, can I ask you, just when going back to when you were younger, do you recall ever missing out on any anything just because you had to, to go to training? Yeah. You feel like you've ever sacrificed, like, times in your life, like, doing other sports or because everything was still on football? Um, yeah, I, I missed out socially, like, with people from school, like, when they'd, and they'd be going out on the Friday or the Saturday, um, and I'd have I'd have a game or training or whatever on the Saturday. Like I'd I'd miss out, yeah, but I always knew that it would be for a reason. And to be fair, I'd, I'd be looking forward to football, so it wasn't it wasn't too bad for me. I think some people struggle a lot with that type of thing, um, missing out and having to sacrifice other things so they can concentrate fully on football, but. I wasn't too bad of it. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Uh, good question, Chanel. So um, I think we've got over time. Uh, H, I really appreciate your your, your time tonight. A big shout out. Um, yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. It's uh, been fascinating, especially for the parents and and some of the younger kids that are, are tuning in. And um, we have got uh, a fellow player and friend of yours, Kelvin Atu, who coming in on Thursday. So, uh, you know what Kelvin's like, he's a real character. Yeah, so, yeah. Parents he, should are... have, he should have some good stories. Yeah, <laughs> some good stories, yeah. <laughs> and I think we've got Josh Bowie, who uh, ex-Man United, who's now at Nack Breda in Holland, so a little bit about uh, European flavour next Monday. And then the yeah. following Thursday, we've got Shane, you talked about Shane Murphy, who yeah. has just been named the uh, Scottish Football Association Head of uh, sports science, so yeah, I've seen that, I've seen that. Yeah, another member of the team. So we're we're, we're onwards and upwards. I'm just um, leaving mine and, and Chanel's details for anybody asking any questions. It's all free, guys. So any questions that you want, you want to get in touch, please contact us. We also would love you to subscribe to Propel Sports YouTube channel. This will be aired along with some more slides and points about tonight and last week's session on Thursday regarding. Uh, injuries on the Propel Sports YouTube channel. So please uh, tune in. Shout out to Shane. Thanks, Shane. No problems. It's been uh, it's been good to listen to uh, Hallam under a bit of pressure, but know, uh, right? just just touching on it as well. You know, he's he's technically really really good, and there's nothing stopping the lad playing in Championship. I remember going to watch him with you, Baz, and we seen Les Parry from United. You know, he stood out like a sore thumb playing for Carlisle because technically he's really good. And I don't tell him this all the time because obviously he gets a big head. But um, you know, he, there's no stopping him. He should he should be playing a higher level, and he knows that. So, like he mentioned before about working hard and stuff like that, it's up to Hallam to get where he wants to get. Obviously, we can help and assist any way we can. But you know, I think he knows what he's got now um, and where he has to get. And it's 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 due to his hard work and his determination. I and so. I think um, I, th I think he'll definitely get there, you know, because he's got the talent. He's got, you know, not a bad shape on him, a little bit like me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chanel. no, no, he's he's good, mate. He, he'll go far. He's got a good work ethic, and that's the other thing as well, Baz. You need players that have got the work ethic, like Callum. You know, yeah. we we want players for Propel who's got the same sort of attitude as yeah. as he's got, that's and great. you know, understanding realistic goals, you know. But anyway, that's enough. But yeah, well done, Hal. Chanel? Yeah, definitely. That's, that, that's what's coming across to me as well. You've got a brilliant work ethic and you've stayed um, focused and not let it get to your head. Just let, just just played your football and obviously you've got to where you get it. You'll only just go in even further and I wish you all the best. Thanks Thank very you. much. Nice one. Right, so, uh, Really important. Uh, you've got a great team behind you, mate. We know you can go far. Um, we're all rooting for you. You've got a good family support. It's really important. 
and you need a little bit of luck at the end of the day, but we'll, we'll help in you all the way. And um, I think you can reach the top, mate. It's just in your grasp. But yeah. at the same time, you, you do need a bit of luck and, and football is a little bit of luck as well, you know. Um, but we're rooting for you. Thanks for coming in. One last question from Carl yeah. Ramalli. Hi, Carl. Uh, do you think your stats are too low or too high on FIFA? Too low. <laughs> <laughs> too low. Too low. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we'll get Hallam on again in another four, four, three, four weeks uh, to talk about transfers and a couple of other things. But appreciate it. Uh, oh. we'll see you all on Thursday, guys, uh, for uh, Kelvin Atuhu, ex uh, Man City, absolute legend. Is uh, look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Thanks, guys. Bye. See you later. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Callum. Can you hear me? Yeah, I've just stopped it. Sorry, Chanel. Yeah, I can. How are you? All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thanks. That was really, really interesting, that. Really, it's given so much in.